YouTube, what's going on? It's Thursday night, so we are almost to the weekend. Only eight more days until I am at the annual toy show. Can't wait for that. Love it. Look forward to it every year. Okay, I found some stuff today. Some of it kind of basic, some of it awesome. I found what I think is one of the most awesome looking cars I have found in the wild. Uh, quite possibly ever. So we'll get to that. But first, I found a few of these. Of course, the uh, well, they were all there except for the F-150 and the Silverado. So I grabbed a couple of the Studebakers. People seem to be hoarding this one from what I've seen. Unless that's in my head. It's possible that's in my head. So here's another one I'll keep on card. I also found another Moon Eyes uh, Matchbox Ford truck. So since that's a duplicate, I'll keep that in the package as well. Not Honestly, not real sure why I grabbed it. But I did find this. I was kind of surprised that there was a 70 power wagon because there's also a more modern power wagon that was a concept. Real ugly truck. This is awesome. I like this truck. I actually like this truck a lot more than the black one that came out from the Mopar series. This one to me looks way better. The wheels and tires on it look way better, and the color, the color and graphics look way better. So that's a cool truck there. IMO. For a main line. It is a plastic base. And I think the other one is a metal base. I don't, I actually don't recall. I need to pull it out and see. I don't care that much, but this is definitely, I'll get a better angle of it towards the end of the video, but there's some stuff in this video, the likes of which haven't been seen on this channel. So I found a bunch of these. I only grabbed two. It's a sweet looking car. I really wish Greenlight would do this car. It's a 65 Volkswagen Type 3 Fastback. This is from the Matchbox Moving Parts series. These are way overpriced for what they are. And as far as I know, there's only three of them. There's the Pontiac Grand Prix. There's the Nissan Xterra. And there's this car here, which this one here is hands down my favorite of the three. It's the best color. I just love this little car, man. That's like your quintessential licensed model matchbox car right there. Has some great detail. And we're going to take a closer look at these cars later on in the video. I have to keep the camera on the tripod for now. <clears throat> so before I get to the awesome car that I found today, um, you guys know that I... I do <clears throat> dioramas. It's just what I do. It's what I enjoy. I find it fun. Um, they're great for photographs. And they're great for the die cast hobby. Because there's a lot you can do with them. You know, if you have kids, they can play with them. If you do videos like I do, um, they're great for the video. Because showing cars on a layout like this, in my opinion, is much more eye appealing much more catchy than someone showing cars on a desktop or a table that's why i built the first layout that i built was because i started doing videos and i wanted my channel to be i wanted there to be something different about my channel and it's really spawned itself into a whole hobby for me i enjoy making the dioramas at least as much as i enjoy collecting probably even more but, in doing dioramas, 
I also have a seven-year-old daughter. And she goes through phases of collecting, which I love. I love that she collects stuff. When she was two and a half, three, somewhere around three, she collected these little Disney plastic fig action figures that were called magic clips. And the dresses were little clips. And you could just unclip it and change out the dress on all these princesses. So that was the first thing. And then it just evolved. Then she got into Shopkins. Then she got into Nom Noms. <clears throat> the thing that she's been collecting a lot lately is um, fingerlings. And they're $15. So what, what I've been supporting her with is the mini fingerlings, which come in little blind bags. They're like three bucks. So she has, I don't know, 35 or 40 of those. But in that same part of the toy aisle, they have little blind bags of these. And so I thought I'd give it a try to see if they're suitable for the layouts. So let's take a look. We'll get back to the die cast, guys. I, it, you can feel free to skip through if you're not interested. But if you make layouts, um, you might be... Some of these are awesome. I'll just say that. So... Uh, I don't have the... Whoa, now. Whoa. Very lucky that that didn't fall over. I don't have the list <clears throat> with me. That It's like a checklist. So I don't know what kind of dog this is. This one's not all that nice. <clears throat> but they come two per box and you get a little sticker for the kid and you get a little dog bowl for the diorama. There's a little dog bowl. Okay, so the other dog was a bulldog and they are like molded silicone so I'm not sure what this is but I think this is a, co a cocker spaniel maybe and then this is for sure a bulldog I just don't know what kind of bulldog all right so I got two of these just to kind of test it out um, this one here I think I did much better. Now there are, there's a husky, um, there's a, there's a chow, there's a Sharpay, there's a boxer, um, there is a Doberman, which is the one I really want, want to get. I'm not sure how many more of these I'll buy. Probably maybe just one or two just to have a few different uh, dogs for the dioramas, but I did get to me, this looks like a, a Basset Hound, <clears throat> but there isn't a Basset Hound on the checklist. So, I'm not sure. It looks too... It's a wiener dog. It doesn't look like a Dash Hound to me, which is the hound that's on there. But the best one of all of them, and this would probably be my first choice after the Doberman, is the Bernese Mountain Dog. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those. They are majestic dogs they're awesome dogs but i i did get the bernie's mountain dog so uh he's in his little playful position so you could see that they come in different posable positions um let me grab my green light diorama stuff here because this is the true test and i haven't even done this yet honestly i think that the dogs are probably a little big Actually, yeah, they definitely are a little big. So here's a green light lady. Um, I guess it all depends on how you photograph it. I would love it if green light came out with some uh, some <laughs> some dogs. Yeah, it's definitely they're definitely not going to work with the green light. Probably not going to really work in general because, you know, here's the car and well, this dog is more probably closer to the size of a wild boar. 
So for scale, they're not S scale or HO scale. So with that being the case, I probably won't get any more because that was the only reason I got them was in the hopes that I could use them. Now I could still use them for, you know, photographs of the layout because they fit in with the layout as long as they're proportioned with everything around them. And with the landscape, obviously, you know, they'll fit. But if I put green light people in the same shot, it's not going to work without using forced perception, which is a really awesome photographing technique that I've never done. I've seen people do it. It's called forced perception or forced perspective. And uh, I've seen people do it in modeling. And it's quite amazing. And basically what it is, is you take, like, for example, my my uh, car dealership building, which is a, which is a HO scale building. And out, off in the background of the layout, you would put like a 1 to 90 second scale building. So that it looks like it's off in the distance because it's smaller which makes it look further away. All you're doing is you're forcing the perspective of the observer. It's it's an art form within the art form and it's it's pretty impressive. Anyways, I haven't done that, but that would work. I don't know how I got off into this uh totally non-diecast related rant, but I did get one other thing too. <clears throat> this one I think is probably far more accurate actually as I look at it but you never can tell till you have them next to each other but let's take a look because uh, another thing that they have is horses now they're on the girl aisle and they're in these little pink um, blind bags so yes I have a daughter even if I didn't I'd still probably purchase these I, I can't tell you guys how much I've been looking for horses for these layouts because they're very hard to find. Um, the few that I have found have looked like crap. They haven't been detailed at all. And this one is actually not, the detailing on it is not bad. Very hard to get it to stand up. And the reason that I wanted a horse was because I have a horse trailer. So I wanted a scale horse to fit the horse trailer. And this horse doesn't fit in the trailer. It's because of the position it's in. It won't. It's just a little too tall. But from a scale standpoint, um, I think it's pretty darn close, actually. You know, you figure a horse, the back of a horse is probably close to six feet off the ground. So from a scale and perspective standpoint, these horses are probably pretty darn close to HO scale. And uh, because of the pose of this horse, it actually does kind of look like it's attempting to get into the horse trailer. Which, by the way, this horse trailer, I don't know if I've ever shown it up close on the channel. This is a green light horse trailer. It's very, very nice. The uh, interior is also detailed out. So it would be ideal to get two horses to fit back there. I, you know, I know WTFFOR found himself some horses for his. I've been looking for years. Not hard, but, but I've been looking and just haven't found anything. So I will probably grab a couple more of these as well to try to find at least one that will fit inside the trailer. Uh, this will be good for the layouts also, though. There we go. It could stand to use a little bit more detail. 
I wish the mane wasn't so femme looking. Looks like a unicorn. But it's definitely the best looking horse I've seen in the at this size, in this scale. Alright, now let's get on. I know I'm gonna get a lot of shit for uh for the last ten minutes of this video. But I have to show you guys this car that I found at Walmart today. I was shocked that it was there, if I'm honest. Um surprised that um that no one else had picked it up. It was the only one. I would have bought all of them. Had there, had there been more, I for sure would have bought all of them. But it's, uh, like I said, it's one of the best looking cars I've ever picked up out in the wild. Which is saying a lot. And surprisingly, it's M2. So... All right, here you go. Let's see what you guys think about this car. It's a 1971 Hakoska Nissan Skyline GTR, and it's in black and green. And to me, that is what does it. It came in a model kit, uh, um, an auto lift kit. So it came with the auto lift here. And it came with two sets of wheels. I painted the gray ones and ruined them. The paint ate the plastic, so that sucks. But, you know, sometimes stuff is meant to happen. And that forced me to use the black wheels, which... The black on the green... It looks so much better than the gray wheels did. So you have a black trunk, black hood. All of the window trim is black. So a couple things I love about the car and then a couple things I hate about the car. The thing I love about the car, and I've been wanting to see this from M2 for a long time. I, I want to see it from Greenlight too. You know, we see so many chrome bumpers. I get so sick of it. I want to see colored bumpers, whether it's the color of the car or whatever. In this case, they did black. I love it. It looks killer. Black bumper on the front and the rear. And it looks absolutely killer. Now, what I hate about the car is that you go with this theme of no chrome, and yet the taillights are still chrome and the grill is still chrome. So I wish that everywhere on this where you see chrome, that it was blacked out. It probably wouldn't be that hard to black it out could probably even do it with a magic marker um, you can remove these inserts <clears throat> but you have to be careful or you'll break it but if you could take the insert out and get it on some kind of a tree or even maybe some vice grips or something to allow you to black out all the chrome because if you blacked out all the chrome and left the headlights chrome that would look insane so i i don't understand why m2 didn't do that but even having not done that i just think this car looks amazing it's not a chase car um but the the paint job and the colorway on it it just makes it look so much more modern. And probably my favorite 1 to 64 scale Hakoska Skyline I have ever seen right here. And I know that's saying a lot, but you can take all the Kyoshos, the Carnells, all of those. I think this one looks as good or better. And it's not the casting. If you. If you could take a Carnell Kyosho Hako GTR and put this colorway on it, that would be ridiculous. But I just think this paint job is so insane. It looks so good. So in this subjective, you know, you guys are probably looking at it like, eh, it's not that impressive. And I had to sit through 
little girl toys. So I'll probably lose a few subscribers from this one. That's okay. I don't care about that. I lose subscribers every day. Doesn't bother me at all. All right, so I did, I kind of somewhat moderately customized an M2. Um, it's a 240Z. I think it's also a 1971. But kind of goes in with what I was talking about with this Hako, where you have this basically murdered out 240Z, and it came with a chrome front bumper and a chrome rear bumper and so what i did because m2 has released the racing z's which which are bumper delete and uh so i knew what they looked like and i knew they looked good so i was like you know what i'm just gonna pull the chrome bumpers off of the car so i did that which goes a long way in making the car look awesome but even still when you have these awful looking m2 wheels because this is the the wheel for the 240z this is the best that m2 has to offer for the auto japan it's just awful absolutely awful it's worse than auto world now these wheels here don't they they're not as they're not nearly as bad but they're not great they're just black steelies but they do look better than the ones that come with the uh, 240 anyways so once you get the chrome bumpers off you have to get some new wheels on this car because those stock wheels are bad and uh, these wheels here just happen to be the wheels that came on the uh, what is it? The NO64, I think it's like a 92 Honda Civic. So, because on that car, what I did is I put the white wheels on it because I like the way the white wheels look better. So that left me with these wheels to mess around with. Now, believe me, I wanted to put these wheels on this car. And I test fit them and all that good stuff, and I couldn't make it work because of the axles. The These are on the NO64 axle, and they work perfectly fine. But that axle is way too wide for this car. And the size of the hub on these wheels is way too small for the M2 axle. If you were to put the M2 axle on these wheels, you would blow out the hub and then the wheels would be useless. So I just thought, you know what? The black Z looks killer as it is. I'll keep those wheels on it and I'll just go with these black wheels on this. But I did put the Yokohama Portenza tires or Advan tires actually on this um, which came with actually they didn't come with this they came with the red one of these which is the miho exclusive so i i did some switching around which i always do i want to put the cars together to make them to make them look the best that they can possibly look and so these two cars are in my opinion i in my opinion Hands down, without question, this is the best Hakoska Skyline that they brought out. And that even includes chase cars, in my opinion. And this is easily the best 240, best looking 240Z that they've put out. Now, on this one, I think I have seen some chase cars that, that look better. But as far as all the regular releases, that looks so killer. That looks so killer. So, uh, anyways um since i have it out here's the other recent hako m2 acquisition this came in the yokohama auto hauler it's pretty cool graphics on this car um it doesn't so surprisingly they did give it yokohama tires but these are the old gt special and i wonder if those are retro tires 
because the graphics on that Yokohama trailer look they look retro it looks very nostalgic but these are definitely modern advans so and I like this car a lot too I think this one looks really cool you have the GT special graphic on top you got the let's go graphic so what do you guys think which one of these do you think looks better to me no question that green one is one of the coolest looking cars in my opinion again I have to qualify that it's one of the coolest looking cars I've seen in 1 to 64 scale and it has everything to do with the paint job it's a decent tooling to start with it's not a great tooling but it's decent I just love that deco there's another one see and I thought these Yokohama graphics look good I like the red and white one as well they look good but it gets kind of old you know at least with this M2 did something totally new something that they have not done on any of the Auto Japan cars yet and I really hope that we start seeing more of this from M2 and also from Greenlight. Three awesome Hakoska Skylines. All right, um, that's really all that I wanted to show you guys. Um, I we're 26 minutes, so I probably should wrap it up. I just so happen to have some auto world cars out like that vintage Cadillac how good do those cars look next to each other um, I also have a first-gen Honda Civic hatch you guys ever seen one of those in 1 to 64 scale I believe that Konami's the only one to ever do it outside of Tomoka. Although, eh, Kyosho might have done this one. Really cool looking little Honda Civic. That's true 164 scale. Just to give you an idea, proportionately, it's a very small car. Another car that I have out that I haven't shown in a very long time is this Mazda Cosmo. Which is a wicked cool car right there. That is an iconic automobile right there. And look, it just smiles at you. Man, I, I love that. I just love that Hako. I love I love that color green on one to sixty-four scale cars. Like my Toyota Starlet. Love that car. That is just so freaking bitch, and I love it. Sorry if I'm annoying you with my favoritism, but I I don't know. But I would I really would like to get your guys' thoughts on that though. Tell me what you think. Uh, list your three favorite M2 Hakoska Skyline decos because they've actually done quite a few decos. And they've done some nice ones, but none of them top that almost has like a rocket bunny look to it all right on that note we will wrap this video up we're going to get the horse in the trailer got the old dodge man that's a great casting there too i should show that old dodge d100 and these auto lifts are pretty cool for all you guys that have the garage dioramas or the auto shop dioramas these auto lifts work great for that they are I wish that they were a little smaller to scale and I wish instead of having the lift all the way up I wish they had it halfway up or even make it adjustable because it, it looks like it's adjustable but it is not adjustable it's just the way that they designed it to give it the detail you can take it apart you can take the base off of it off of the legs 
So maybe that's the way to do it. Take that base off and build a, a custom lift using that base. But the lifts are cool because it has the graphics on it, like the uh, M2 machines. You have some of the hydraulic uh, pumps and stuff like that. On the other side, well, this one doesn't have them. Wow, that's weak. Man, I've got probably 20 of these lifts. And usually they have like little, the little control panel with the buttons and all that stuff. All that's detailed. They also have some auto zone lifts, which are black and orange. I've got a couple of those too. Those are pretty awesome. And these lifts are die cast metal, so they're heavy. You can stack them. You can stack them. I've had them as high as seven with cars on them and never had an issue. So uh, Hobby Lobby used to sell these in five packs for like $11.99 or something like that, but they no longer sell them. So I just kind of hoard them from when I find cars like this. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking, guys. Have a good Friday, and hopefully I'll be back this weekend with some awesome diecast. Peace out.